we are now going to present to you our top five wide receivers in the history of Alabama football. Now, give them a listen. You know, give us a shot. And then uh, let us know what you think of our list at 205 342 9904. Let's get things going. This one might be a bit of a surprise, might be a little bit lower than where a lot of people would have our, our first entry at the number five spot in our list of top five Alabama wide receivers of all time. But here he is from Foley, Alabama, Julio Jones from 2008 2010. Uh, a huge part, obviously, of the turnaround of Alabama football. Under Nick Saban, had several highlights, as we all know, in his three years on the campus of the University of Alabama. But this one stood out as a top two, top three type moment for Julio Jones at the University of Alabama. Because of the injury, as Julio Jones is matched up against a safety. McElroy, here's Julio Jones. Gets by the safety, and he's got a chance. The chase is on, and it will be won by Julio Jones. Ah, yes, the screen into the boundary against LSU in 2009, an Alabama offense, if you recall, at that point in the season, struggling mightily, especially in the passing game, an offense that was squarely on the shoulders, for the most part anyway, of running back Mark Ingram, one of those classic grinders against LSU, Greg McElroy with a quick flip out to the left flat. No Patrick Peterson on the field, as I recall. The star defensive back for LSU was off the field for that play, and Julio Jones ends up going the distance, a play that went a long way in Alabama, finishing off LSU and continuing its run to a perfect season of 14-0. and 0. Julio Jones, I've got at the number five position in our top five wide receivers of Alabama football history. Number four, the Wizard. Uh, before he became Ozzie Newsome, pro football Hall of Fame tight end, Ozzie was a split in for legendary coach Paul Bear Bryant in that wishbone attack. Uh, while that offense certainly will never be confused for the run and shoot, With Newsom on the outside, it produced some explosive plays. Here is more on our number four entry in our our top five wide receivers in Alabama football history, Ozzie Newsom. Upon his selection to the Hall of Fame, Ozzie Newsom said there ought to be two Hall of Fames, one for Coach Bryant and one for everyone else. His coach would have disagreed. Alabama's player of the decade for the 1970s, Newsom was a unanimous All-American pick in 1977 and the SEC's Lineman of the Year. Known for his circus-like catches, he was known as the Wizard of Oz during his years at the Capstone and later with the NFL's Cleveland Browns. During his Alabama career, he averaged 20.3 yards per catch, which still stands as the SEC record for players with 100 or more receptions. A member of the NFL Hall of Fame as one of the best tight ends ever, Newsom became the league's premier general manager with the Baltimore Ravens. A native of Layton, Alabama, he was chosen for membership in the College Football Hall of Fame in 1994. There he is, Ozzie Newsom. As Ron Franklin described to you in that clip, not only uh, the Alabama player of the decade for the 1970s, also a member of Alabama's team of the century, spanning 1892 to 1992, members of both the pro and college football halls of fame, Ozzie Newsome. Number three, a man simply known during his time at the capstone as the deuce. He could do it all, literally. Run, throw, catch, posterize would-be tacklers on punt returns. David Palmer, just absolutely outstanding with the football in his hands. As much as anything, I'll remember a game, I believe, I believe it was uh, 93 at Ole Miss, Alabama because of injury situation at the quarterback position with Jay Barker. Palmer not only lined up at quarterback, he threw the football. He had a crossing route against the Rebels in Oxford that was as good a throw as you will see from an Alabama quarterback uh, in the last 25, 30 years. So at number three on the list, Here's the deuce in one of his more memorable moments uh, at the University of Alabama, the third Saturday in October 
against the Tennessee Vols in 1993. Alabama has not lost to Tennessee since 1985. They've got the longest win streak in the country, 28 wins in a row, defending national champs. And here comes the two-point conversion. Never has a tie felt as good to Alabama fans as that one in 1993 as David Palmer on a simple snap and quarterback sweep to the right got inside just inside that pylon into the end zone salvaging a 17 to 17 tie for the Crimson Tide and keeping that unbeaten streak to the Tennessee Vols at the time alive. Number two on the list. An all-timer. You know, Robbie, one of our callers, checked in uh, around 12.45 or so with his top five, and he had Don Hudson high on his list. I don't know how you couldn't. I mean, you pick a Hall of Fame, and Don Hudson is probably in it. He was a unanimous first-team All-American choice in 1934 after leading the Crimson Tide to a national title in the 1935 Rose Bowl. Hudson, who also played baseball at the University of Alabama, by the way, caught six passes for 165 yards and two touchdowns. Here's more on Don Hudson from Ron Franklin. Probably no player in the history of football revolutionized the passing attack like Alabama All-American Don Hudson. In the 1935 Rose Bowl victory over Stanford, Hudson caught six passes for 165 yards and scored on receptions of 59 and 54. A member of the all-time college football team, the all-time NFL team, and the all-time Alabama team, Don Hudson is one of the most decorated players in the history of football. While at Alabama, Hudson also starred as a baseball outfielder and track sprinter, but it was on the football field where he really shined. His end around touchdown beat Tennessee 13-6 in 1934, ultimately setting up the trip to Pasadena and the national championship. The Pine Bluff Arkansas native is a charter member of eight different halls of fame, including the inaugural College Hall of Fame class in 1951. There you go. Don Hudson, the legendary performer for the Crimson Tide, whose play really transcends eras. We like to get into these discussions about, yeah, well, Don Hudson played in the 30s. Well, Don Hudson took the position somewhere it had never been before previously, and not just on the college level, but on the professional level with the Green Bay Packers as well. All of this takes us to the top spot on our top five wide receivers in Alabama football history a guy who prior to the 2014 season may have been towards the bottom of this five. But after catching an SEC record 124 passes for 1,727 yards while also securing uh, the Blitnikoff Award and finishing third in the Heisman Trophy voting that year, it has to be Amari Cooper. Holds career records at Alabama in receptions, receiving yards, and touchdown receptions with 31. Here is one of the best to ever do it at Alabama, the best in our opinion at the wide receiver position, a highlight of note for Amari Cooper from that 2014 season. Play fake. Sims goes deep, wide open. Oh, my gracious. Over the coach. Amari Cooper will stroll in. See, they outside, they've got... Hargraves to the outside, but watch Cooper beat number 42. You'd think he's going that way, but he actually goes to the middle. All the action goes to the outside. Cooper fakes like he's going to the sideline, goes back to the inside, and you just might as well throw that ball as high as you can because that way Cooper has time to get under it like a center fielder. And Amari Cooper just kind of walks into the end zone. Nice offense. There you go. Throw it deep indeed. And whatever you thought of Lane Kiffin in his three years as the offensive coordinator at the University of Alabama, that 2014 season was an absolute clinic from Kiffin on how to get your best football player, your best offensive football player for sure, not only touches, but the different ways in which Kiffin went about doing it. That particular play against the Florida Gators, Kiffin got Cooper into the slot, matched up against a safety type, 
and it was Katie Bar the door. Touchdown. One of a couple in that game. Kenyon Drake, you remember, uh, with a huge play to get that one going. Sort of pro throw style from 2005 against the Florida Gators in that 2014 matchup with Will Muschamp, then University of Florida head coach. So there you go. Our top five Alabama wide receivers of all time.